Good morning, CL fam! Welcome to our very first breakfast mukbang. <laughs> We decided to eat breakfast today. We thought, why not do a Q&A for the second trimester? Because a lot of you guys have got so yeah, many questions. I keep, we keep getting the same questions in our DMs and stuff, so we just thought why we'd not answer, answer them some all. of them that we haven't answered already. Before we actually answer the questions, thank you so much for the support on the gender reveal. That video was amazing. It did so well. Your comments were amazing. We're so happy to be having a baby boy. Yeah. I can't. I still can't believe it. It just seems so surreal. If you haven't already seen our first Q&A, you need to go and watch that one because yes. there's probably some questions that we all won't answer here that we've already answered. And I guess we'll just kick it off with the first question. Oh, okay. So the first question I've got is from my mother. Can she see the baby at least once a week? I'm sure that won't be a problem. I don't, I don't think... No. No, she's not allowed to see our child at all. At all? No. Wow, that's very strict. No. Only on birthdays if she brings presents. Good idea, let me get free <laughs> gifts. Your mum's gonna be like... Can I babysit? We're going to be like, I don't want to leave our baby. <laughs> Someone said, did you want a boy? Did we have any gender disappointment? Were we hoping for a girl? Were we happy that we had a boy? So is gender disappointment a real thing? Yeah, some people genuinely do. Have, it's, it's completely normal, but some people do have gender disappointment. I understand if you want a boy. I don't think we had a preference or I didn't. You may have. No. Because I was so I was so adamant that we were having a boy, if it would have been a girl, I would have been a bit like, oh god. Because in my head I was so convinced that it was a boy. But I'm not disappointed at all. We always said, if we could choose what order we'd have children in, we'd always have a little boy first to look after a little girl. Yeah, the older brother figure. I think that's yeah. amazing. We do want a girl, but what order they come in it is not an issue to mm -hmm. us at all. When I heard that it was a boy, I got really emotional. Again, I didn't have a preference, but now that I know it's a boy... Yeah, because everyone said, I'm really why does God just not look amusing? but I swear he was because we were in front of so many people it's so overwhelming my heart was as we were popping the balloom my heart was going boom, 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 almost boom. cried he, he did genuinely almost cry and he was trying to hold it in which is why he had such a like straight face the whole thing because he was trying to like hold it back yeah but yeah definitely but now I know I'm having a boy. boy I'm so happy that I'm having a boy and he's already got his first Arsenal kit do you feel baby boy kicking very hard now oh I, I've got that question as well. Hmm. A very similar one. No harder than usual. Obviously harder than the first time he started kicking. But he's been kicking quite hard for a few weeks now, hasn't he? I felt him early. Well, we assume we did, but again, they only estimate what week you are. Yeah. So for all we know, because you didn't have a period, because you, as soon as you came off the implant, you were then pregnant. Mm -hmm. We don't know exactly what week you are. Mm -hmm. So you could have been like 20, 21, which is when they say that you start feeling it. But I felt it on week 19 for Liana, so that's early if it was week 19. Mm. Now they're way more frequent, you can way see stronger. Them as well. Yeah, you can actually physically see them now, whereas before you could only feel them if you pushed down. Yeah. They're not, I, because I've seen like, Pregnant women get kicks from the baby, like seeing it. It's definitely not as strong as it could be. Not yet, anyway. No. But you are very small. Yeah, I'm very well, small. you're not small, but you're small compared to others. Are you scared about what your postpartum body will look like? A little bit. I would say you are. I think because this pregnancy wasn't planned, I was not mentally prepared for pregnancy. any of the well, yeah, any of the changes that my body was going to go through. Stretch marks don't bother me, but I was so like into the gym and this, that, and the other, and I just I wasn't ready for it. I didn't mentally prepare myself, but I don't know. I think I'll get over it. We've got a home gym. We've, no. Yeah, but there's some things that a gym can't fix. No, but I what I'm saying is, is that <clears throat> the they suggest is. you to exercise during pregnancy to like lower the effects afterwards. Mm -hmm. You haven't done any exercise. We, yeah. we should probably start doing exercise. If it helps, I'm doing it with you. Mm -hmm. We should probably try. Yeah, because when I got into the first trimester, I cut off everything because I felt so bad. Yeah. And then obviously we moved house and then our treadmill key went missing, so I couldn't get on the treadmill. Yeah. So we've had a lot of like- We have valid excuses. <laughs> That's doesn't, my excuse. doesn't everyone. I'm not going yeah, to the no. gym today. <laughs> yeah, to know that your body's been able to carry a baby, make a life, that kind of like overpowers the fact that my body is not going to look like what it used to. Some people just spring back. Mm. Would you let your fans pick boy names for you to choose from? Yes. No. Because <laughs> I'm too picky. You don't want suggestions then? Oh, I'd take suggestions, yeah. That's what they're saying. That's a pick. Would you let fans pick boys' names for you to choose from? Yeah, but that, that would mean we'd have to choose from like the top selection of boy names that they chose. That's how I see it. Okay, no. <laughs> but I, I take suggestions, 100%, but I'm a bit, I'm a bit fussy. I'm <laughs> very fussy. I think I've misread the question then. Well, it, it depends how, what, in what context you read it though. Would we let you pick a list of boys' names for us to pick from? No. Would we let you suggest boys' names? Please, in the comments now, any boys' name that isn't Jack, Harry, 
Sam, Mitch, Mitch, like your Noah, bog standard name, Connor. Josh. There's like a million of those. We don't want a name that's been used and abused. Loads of times, yeah. We want an unusual name. Nothing that's ridiculous. But, yeah. So we're not going to call it Rock or anything. But I know everyone watching now is going to comment Arlo. <laughs> Because the amount of times I've asked for a boy name... And everyone said Arlo. That's kind of like unique and everyone has said Arlo and I'm thinking if everyone's telling me Arlo, it can't be that unique. No, because everyone's, everyone's telling me the same yeah, thing. True. Yeah, true. But yeah, give us some suggestions Cute name, that you don't really hear these days. Boys' names you like but won't use. So, if we're going on the fact that like I like some names but I won't use them because they're overused or because I can associate them with someone, I love the name Theo. I think it's so adorable, but... If you've watched Prison Break, you'll know why I can't name my kid Theo. <laughs> Theodore Bagwell. <laughs> <laughs> Teabag. I'm associating that name with somebody else. With an absolute freak. Oh well, yeah. It is only a character, but I think he, he got done in real life as well, which doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, but also his real name isn't Theo. Do you feel like it's going really fast? I tried to explain this to someone the other day. Pregnancy seems like the slowest but fastest experience ever, and that doesn't make any sense until you actually go through Oh, yeah. It's like we're already over halfway, <clears throat> which is mind-blowing to me. Have we already done over half, half of it already? I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we didn't know we were pregnant for the first, like, month. Maybe. But I, I still think it's gone super fast. Yeah. Even has. from the first midwife appointment. It feels like it was last week. Why has it gone so fast? But then at the same time, I just want baby here now. I was looking at my first bump date, and it was absolutely tiny. <laughs> I looked like there was nothing even in there. And I was just thinking to myself, how was that so long ago? Because that was, what, week 13, I think, I started my bump dates. But it's very gradual, I'm now it? week 24 tomorrow. Yeah. That's it's what I mean. Scary. It's the slowest, fastest thing ever, yeah, but you can't is. explain that. Yeah, no, you can't. You don't want it to be over, but at the same time, you want to meet your baby boy. Like, do you yeah, know I just oh, want him just... here now. Yeah. Oh my goodness, look at that strawberry. Someone says wheels or doors. <laughs> wheels or doors. <laughs> Wheels. I don't know. I've made my decision. Wheels. But then you think about cupboards, which are classed as doors. Wheels, which if you have to actually go by the definition of a wheel. But there's many definitions of a wheel, so it depends which one you're going by. Oh, you have to go by all of them then. Have the cats shown any affection to the baby bump? Do you think they know what it is? No. Uh, no. They do well, no. Nothing out of the ordinary. I think Podge always cuddled me anyway. I think I'm probably a little bit warmer now. But he doesn't come for more cuddles than he used to come for. And he definitely doesn't know you're pregnant. No. He might think, bloody hell, mum, lay off the pasta bake. But I don't think he's thinking, like, you're <laughs> no pregnant. No room for me anymore. They say that cats don't know that you're pregnant, but they do know that you're warmer than usual. Whereas I'm pretty sure dogs know, right? I mm. think dogs, have dogs have an instinct that tells them, like, yeah. Which is mad, because they say cats are more clever than dogs. Yeah, they do. They have b bigger brains. Mm. But they're just so they're lazy. Just okay, and, do they? Yeah. <laughs> they just don't care. Someone's asked, have you got the nursery ready? Wow, you're enjoying that. <laughs> Guys, can you hear this? We get a bit of ASMR oh. for you. I get it every night. I don't know how someone's mouth makes that much noise. Anyway, is the nursery ready? <clears throat> no. So, we are going to be working with a company and they are going to set up the nursery as a surprise. So we have no idea what our nursery is going to look like. We which is so scary, but so exciting. We um, struggle to put things together. We're good, we're very creative, but when it comes to stuff mm. like that, we, we could do it. We thought it'd be so exciting for a video as well, like yeah. having no idea. So we'll go around and kind of like say, oh, if we were doing the nursery, this is what we'd have. And then we're going to see what we actually get. So you give them a, what do you call it? I give them a mood board, a mood so like board. colors and and things that I like. Which I think is super cool. Of the space, I, we've shown them the nursery, right? The room. I don't know. I'll, I'll show you now. I'm gonna insert a clip of the, the nursery and you'll see how much room we've got to work with. It's reasonably sizing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the baby's room. Oh, so I'm, room. <laughs> I'm not sure how it's gonna look on camera, but we, this is, yeah, this is our junk room right now. It will obviously be cleared. So this is gonna be all babies. Yeah, I can't even tell you where anything's going. Because we don't know. I have no idea. It's a surprise. It's so cute though, and I think it's like a perfect size. This is a question I've had loads, okay? Why haven't you taken out your belly bar? Now I've had this a lot. I've got shorts on, so <laughs> it's fine. I have got a maternity bar in. It's like a super long one, and it is completely safe for pregnancy. So that is it. But I've had some people like, take your belly bar out, it's gonna harm the baby. And I'm thinking I've got a maternity bar in. But from far, you can't tell it's a maternity bar. 
So I can understand that. You should never judge a book by its cover. If you don't know, keep it to yourself. And it's assuming. I am allowed one small coffee a day, okay? You're allowed more than that. I'm allowed more than that, yeah. But she doesn't, she just has one. I have one coffee in the morning, that's it. It's all down to the caffeine content. You're allowed 200, 200, right? Yeah, but it, that's only recommended. I know plenty of pregnant women who had multiple coffees a day and they had perfectly healthy babies. It's all down to research, the mum, the partner and gut feeling. Unfortunately, in 2022, everyone has an opinion. Yeah. But it's never just an opinion, it's always a Which statement. Which will take me to another one of my questions at some point. Okay, just say it now. Oh, should I say it now? Okay. Are you scared about raising a child being on social media? Which was the question, and I think... Um, no. Do you want to know why no? Yeah. Because the child would be on social media regardless, regardless. if we're on it or not. It's literally going to be a, a staple part I of any I think, child. if anything, our child will grow up with a lot more knowledge on social media because we're very into it, we know what's going on, we know the ins and outs, and Bobby's going to grow up. A lot of parents now, because they're not in the generation that we are, they don't understand social media, so they can't monitor what their kids are doing, whereas we know the ins and outs of most apps. Mm. And we always will because it's our job to keep up with it. So I think we'll always know how to manage it and how to, I don't know. Yeah. A lot of parents have no idea what their kids are doing on their phones. One thing I hate about being on social media and having a child is the people who want to put in their two pence. Their two pence. Is that what it is? Is that the saying? Whatever. What's the saying? How well, it's not. It no, it just makes sense. It's just two cents, but two oh, pence. Two cents? Well, yeah, well, I don't have cents here okay. in the UK. It's two pence. Yeah, they want to stick their nose into everything. It's like, oh, you can't be eating this. Oh, you've had a poppy egg. You can't be eating poppy eggs. And I just know that when baby is here, I'm still going to get that like, oh my God, I can't believe you've let your child go out in them trousers. Or I can't believe you're letting your baby sit in that seat. Do you know what I mean? I just know that it's going to kind of like extend to how you're parenting your child. One thing you'll miss when you've got a baby. Um, one thing I'll miss is being able to get out of the car and not have to lug a pram out. <laughs> you know, when it's raining, like the one thing I used to hate going around my sisters, because obviously I've got, how many have I got now? Nine nieces and nephews. When it's like peeing it down, and in UK, it's always peeing it down. Fact. You have to lug out the pram, you have to get baby in the pram, and then you've got to put that stupid bloody rain cover over the pram, and it's it's just like 10 minutes before, after you've got out of the car before you can even leave the car. Yeah. I think that's the one thing I'm just a bit like, <sighs> Mine's probably sleep. I, str oh, yeah. I struggle now, I get so tired. Yeah, I spend and I feel like when you have a baby as well, regardless to if baby's sleeping or not, you're going to be constantly like listening out for any little tiny noises. The sleep is going to be one that I miss yeah. heavily and dearly. Nothing you can do about that. How has your morning sickness been? So I wasn't physically sick at all in the first trimester. I was just really tired and sluggish and I couldn't really move. I was just in bed <laughs> most days, wasn't I? Yeah. But then coming into the second trimester is like the best thing ever. It's so amazing. You don't feel pregnant. You forget you're pregnant a lot of the time mm. until you get a kick and then you're like, oh yeah, there's, there's a baby in there. This is like the glowing phase isn't it it's just like them I'm I've got my energy back we um, still get the mood swings sometimes but that's understandable some days I'm a bit more than others but overall I'd say I'm quite well what, what do you think from your point of view do you think second trimester has been a bit more easy going for me yeah definitely just a little bit sluggish from sometimes but some days yeah everyone has their days anyway pregnant or not so yeah sorry if the lighting's changing a lot the sun keeps peering <laughs> in and out and it's so annoying um are you going to bottle feed or breastfeed if you were going to bottle feed what milk would you give I don't even know what the different milks are so we've had a bit of a discussion haven't we I feel like we were we're still a bit on the fence about everything well you say we but it, oh, ultimately me. it's sorry. your decision yeah no no I want to breastfeed, but I don't want to breastfeed from the nipple. Liana wanted to express so we could feed in bottles, and that also helps because, like, during night feeds, I can feed baby yeah. as well, rather than Liana having to always get out of bed. But if you do that, we were told by your sister that you for have the to, first two yeah. weeks you have to breastfeed from the nipple. You can't ex you can't um... express straight away. No, which I don't understand. I haven't done my research on it properly yet, though, to be fair. I don't understand that logic, but she would know. Yeah. Um, so that means that Liana would have to breastfeed for one to two weeks before you can express it. But then I'm frightened that if I breastfeed for the first two weeks, baby w won't then take to an actual bottle. So I'm, I'm just confused to how it all works. But they must do, because if you have to do the one to two weeks, loads of babies have bottles yeah. expressed. But yeah, I, I just, I hate thinking that I am have to be the one that always has to do the feeds. Like it's not every fair. single, That's not every fair. single feed, even if I'm feeling a bit like, mm, I have to get up. Oh, I've got an feed. idea though. You can stay asleep and I can bring baby to your nipple. <laughs> I'll just grab baby. Me sleeping, just... <laughs> what? I've 
think that's Hello? a great idea. <laughs> but no, on a serious note, um, yeah, we're, we're gonna think about Express, or you, you think you wanna try you it. You breastfeed for what? Until baby's like two or three. So that's three years. Three? Yeah, some people breastfeed up until they're four. But that also means I can't, not that I ever go anywhere, but it means that I can't leave the house for longer than, what, three hours? Mm. Is it a feed every three hours a baby has? And you also can't monitor how much milk your baby's drinking. So you know when you've got it in a bottle, you can you can see the ounces and stuff, you can see how much they're drinking. When it's from the nipple, you don't know how much they're drinking. So again, it's, it's all just a bit of a, we need to do a bit more research on it and yeah. go from there, really. Because when it comes to bottle feeding, um, like formula and stuff, I have no idea where to begin. But I'm also very like, even though it's such a natural thing, I'm very like self-conscious. Like I would be so scared to like sit out in public and breastfeed my child just because that's the type of person I am. I'm not very comfortable with my Toblerone boobs and getting them out and just... Well, no one would say You can go to no, private No one places. would care. No one would care. But it's just initially getting over that fright of doing it in public It's not like well. you'd be walking through a high cross, like... <laughs> no, I know. And I, I know you can obviously you can get the big, like, swaddle things that cover your baby as well so no one can actually see anything. But it's, yeah, it's just initially getting over that... I know. That... Scare. It's strange because you've never done it before. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll, we'll work we're something learning. out. We're learning. Very slowly. And then the last one is cravings so far. So we already know that I've had in the first trimester it was brain liquors and Vimto. Oh yeah, Vimto. I forgot about that one. Yeah, I had Vimto. I drank a lot of Vimto. And then now I've had, I had a craving for spaghetti hoops but it hasn't carried on. I had like a couple of days where I fancied spaghetti hoops and that was it. But I think I'm just back on juice now. I really fancy juice. Yeah. Fruit coolers, Vimto if we had any, vitamin waters, just anything that has like a fruity flavor. Cause I've got oranges now as well because obviously I just like the juice out of the oranges. But I haven't had any weird cravings. I don't understand how people have weird cravings. Although I do weird things anyway. Like I put, when I have a microwave um, curry, I put vinegar in it. And cheese. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> That's something I always did anyway before pregnancy. That is so weird. Vinegar and cheese on a curry. Yeah, but you can't knock it till you try it. It has to be this specific microwave But curry. it's just doing an injustice to any curry that's ever made. Oh, no, it makes it taste great. With all the great. spices and stuff, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah vinegar. No, no, but it's bland. Cheese. No, you've got to think. <laughs> that is it's, not a curry. It's a low calorie one. And you so you add the calories <laughs> with the cheese. <laughs> Why buy the low calorie one if you're just going to add the extra calories anyway? Get a tasty one that's full calories. No. You're I mean, strange. It's, it's lacking something. So I put a bit of vinegar, a tiny bit of salt, and a tiny bit of cheese. Just mix it in. You're not, that's the most British thing I've ever heard. And Why it's just it not British? normal. Because it's like going to a Chinese and buying chips. Or going to an Indian and buying chips. It's oh, not in chips their are culture. Nice from the Indian. Yeah, but yes, but it's not in their culture. Oh, I see what you mean. They do it for us. It's always sad times when you go to a proper Indian and they don't serve you chips. <laughs> yeah, because they don't have <laughs> chips. It's not a staple of their diet. No, I know. But you're just so used to having chips on there, aren't you? Like a bit of chips, a bit of rice, a bit of chicken tikka masala. Even a chicken tikka masala isn't really Indian. Pretty sure that's the staple dish of England. I think that is the most popular dish in England. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't think I've tried it. If you go to an Indian and eat chips, <laughs> boiled rice and chicken tikka masala, then you may as well not go to the Indian. Like you may as well just buy it yourself from the bit at home. Yeah, but that's effort. Anyway, that's gonna do it for today's video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a bit slower and more boring than usual, but we'll be back with a normal schedule next week, um, I guess. Oh, we're going to Centre Parks. <laughs> We're going to Centre Parks next week because the midwife said, you know, get away, treat yourself before baby's here, you'll feel better, get some fresh air because all the trees yeah. and the oxygen and stuff. So uh, we're going to Centre Park, so we'll definitely record there. I mean, we'll be posting TikToks and whatnot. Very exciting. So if you're new around here and you come, came from the gender reveal, sorry this video was a bit boring, but it's going to get more interesting, we promise you. Thank you for sticking with us. Subscribe, leave a like, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye! I'm going to eat just... my pan and chocolate. Pan and chocolate.